Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. I'm happy to be with you today here at the start of the last week in the month of January. Well, I tell you, time just keeps passing on and life continues to move forward. God is always working ahead of us as he works with us. And I hope you've experienced that in your life and, and I hope you will experience it even more in the days ahead. So this week, I would like to spend it talking about the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is a different kind of a book from the rest of the Bible. It's full of sayings. It's full of anecdotes. Some of them are one verse long. Some of them are several verses long. And the thing about Proverbs is that it is a real practical book. It gives real life practical advice and it's a guide towards a life of exceptional character and goodness you see this book really is a special little book it doesn't mince words sometimes and you don't have to have deep theological understandings to figure them out most of them are really pretty simple. So with that in mind, I'd like to begin with the first chapter, beginning with verse 7. We find these words. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Well, the first thing that strikes me here is the use of the word fear. Now, normally when people talk about fear, they talk about being afraid. They talk about being scared. They talk about worrying. I'm, I'm fearful of the future. They're talking about anxiousness. I don't know what's gonna happen. And that really causes me fear. And, and if you try to understand this passage with that definition of the word, then you end up being some kind of a manipulation of God, this little pulpit thing that has to, you know, shake and, and, and rattle and, 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 and this, you know, the posture before God is, is not positive. So I'd like to share with you that the word fear here while it's translated that in English, would probably be better translated awe. To be in awe of someone. What does that mean? To have great respect for them, huge understanding of, of their specialness, to, to be overwhelmed with our recognition that we're not in the same category. So to be in awe of God, says, is the foundation of true knowledge. Now, in today's world, we have two kinds of knowledge, at least, maybe more than that. We have school knowledge, and we have what's known as common sense knowledge. And generally speaking, I think most people believe that common sense knowledge is better or if you can't have both, you certainly want to have common sense. And, and, and I think I can somewhat agree with that. But what I really rather state is that I think you need both. You know, you, you need to evaluate what's happening in your world and to understand the challenges that we face as individuals and a society. And, and you won't get that without beyond your self-knowledge. And in addition to that, a lot of common sense, well, as a friend told me once, it's, it's not very common, and sometimes it's not even very sensible. I mean, common sense, when I was growing up, was if you had a cut on your hand, you'd be better off if the dog licked it. Well, school knowledge tells us that's not a good thing, that the dog's tongue is quite dirty 
in terms of uh, microbes and germs and that sort of thing. But I grew up with that common sense and had to sort of drop that one off as I got older. Now, I know there are a lot of people that have a lot of education, and they don't seem to understand anything. I mean, I have a lot of education. I appreciate that. But when we have education and common sense and a sense of the awesomeness of God, then we're in a position to really understand and understand what life is about and what he wants for us. The passage here says that it is the foundation of true knowledge, true knowledge or wisdom. And the next part of this verse says, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Now, we don't really use the word fool much anymore. I mean, there are some people who, who use it, but we, we tend to think that that's a mean word. And you shouldn't call somebody that. But as I said, Proverbs is a very practical book. It's, it's really right there. And so it says that, that if you're going to approach the world without this awesomeness of God, then you really are a fool. You really have missed the main point. Now, you might be very successful, and there are those. I know some of them. They have a lot of things. They have a lot of money, have a lot of prestige, even have a lot of power. But that doesn't make them full of God's wisdom. And it also says that not only do they despise wisdom, but they despise discipline. You see, God wants us to be better than what we have been. And to be better, we have to follow his rules for life. And if we've done it five out of eight times, while that's a good batting average, as they say, it's not eight out of eight. And so we have to work hard to make sure that what we're saying, what we're doing, how we're living our lives, how we're responding to others really is the way God wants us to. Too many times conversations in life don't center around what God wants. It's centered around somebody's opinion. And while I value the opinion of people that in areas that I know little or not much about, when it comes to life, I value the wisdom of someone who is rooted in God's relationships. So that's what Proverbs 1 7 is talking about. If, you, if you're rooted in a solid relationship with God, then that is the foundation of true knowledge. So where do you stand? How does your life look? Well, whatever it is, it can always get better. And so I invite you to think about your life today. Think about what you do, what you say, how you react. And ask yourself, how rooted is all of this stuff in a solid relationship with God? What do you think about that? Hope you have a wonderful day. Hope you have a great week. God bless you. Thanks for listening. If you have a prayer need or a concern, let us know. We'll do everything we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. Take care. I'll talk to you again.